The neighbour gave me the sheet yesterday that uh, had its bearing out, and uh, so he had to do an emergency Caesar and then obviously kill it, so I got it for dog tucker. So here we are, we're going to just have a bit of chop it up on a grotty day in the bay, closing down with rain. So this is what I'm going to use. Don't know if you, all you guys out there have got one of these, but it's a reciprocating saw. I use it on my job, building retaining walls, but it also seconds as a good, uh, it's almost like having a handheld bandsaw. So I'm going to whip down, I've already started cutting down the middle, so I'm going to cut it up and then I'll probably move these horses into the shed further over there and, uh, and we'll cut it all up with this and, and a cleaver. As you can see, the wood's down through it pretty quick. This was my first choice, and it was bloody hopeless, so I upscaled to the reciprocating saw and I just got the knife. Trick is to do it on a better day, but sheep chose the day, so here we are. The other good idea is to make sure you got a the batteries charged. There we go. Right, I've just got that in half, so I'll move the, everything into that bit of shed over there and we can carry on cutting it up. Right, just shifted camp into the shed. Now, cutting up your dog tuckers, or any sort of meat, there's a few things you're going to need. You're going to need a sharp knife, obviously. Blunt knife's good for nothing. A steel to keep the knife sharp. And you can give it a bit of a twink up. Just really good and sharp. Like I said before, reciprocating saw. Brilliant little tool for cutting up, cutting up either your, your meat for your freezer, for your, for your home consumption, or as we're doing today, our dog tucker. Also, I've got this piece. It's a meat cleaver. So you want this to be reasonably sharp as well. So, we'll get into it. Now another couple of things we need. Plastic bags. For putting your meat in. And another handy utensil. A permanent marker, felt to pen. Especially if you're putting dog food in the same freezer as you're putting your wild pork or your venison or whatever. You don't want to be pulling out your dog food to eat. You don't want to be pulling out your good meat for your dogs. So, labelling your meat is quite a good idea. Right, let's get into it. What we're going to do is just, basically, the dogs don't mind how it's all cut, so basically just going to whip it into sections. Pretty much cut it however we like. I don't want to get too technical about it. Probably just throw this on the side for now. Cut this one down the middle. Just got the cleaver there. Like I say, nothing too technical. dogs out while you're doing this. You have a tendency to pinch the meat and run off with it. What I'll do, being sheep, I'll freeze this for a few days before I give it to the dogs. That way it hopefully kills any any hydatids or bugs or anything that the dog the sheep may have had. It should be clean, but good not to take the chance.
nice sized bits for the dogs. We'll just bag it up. Bench, this one here, so these can remove by the look of it. The best idea. This is my pool table, it acts as a seconds as a bench for all number of uh, activities. She's a beast, eh? Maybe make these bits a bit smaller. Fat the dogs too much. Use the saw for that. That'll do. TV is we can delete these bits out if we have to. So all you'll see is the good bits. fat on them on it for the dogs and a nice bit of red meat and a bit of bone so they get a bit of everything so that's really really good tenderized as well as cut up cut up so there you have it pretty well done so all I've got to do now is just label it up and throw it in the freezer make sure it doesn't get mixed up with the, with the wild pork and the venison so hope you enjoyed that little clip catch you later been out for a hunt didn't catch a pig but uh, don't always catch a pig so just about to let the dogs out
Folks, folks. Me. Day's work. No pigs, but it's hunting. <laughs> 